Hi all and welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and our continuing video user guide for APT. In this video we're going to be moving on to looking at the camera tab. So let's get into it. Now the camera tab comes in two flavours uh, depending on which type of camera you have connected. The first mode is if you have a supported Canon or Nikon camera and the other one for CCD and CMOS cameras or a DSLR connected via a ASCOM driver. Now there's not a lot of difference between the two but uh, mainly it's at the bottom down here which is the options you have for your camera that's connected. So today I'm going to do them each in turn and we're going to start with a DSLR. So here we go. Okay so let's get into the camera tab for a DSLR. Of course the first button you have up here is your connect and disconnect button. I've run through how to connect different cameras in a previous video so I'm not going to do it here and I'm just going to click connect to set up get my camera connected. Um, I started APT holding down shift so the camera didn't connect automatically but there it is now. And of course then you have your start and stop buttons. Um, before I go into them too much but uh, down here you have your plan selection list which allows you to select the plan you're going to use at this time. So I'll just click on the test one. This is a slightly altered one of the default that comes with APT. Um, but uh, just a note on the plans, there are separate plans for a DSLR and a CD, CCD CMOS camera. Uh, they don't cross over between the different profiles. So if you want a similar plan in both of them, you'll need to create separate plans for both of them. But we're on to the start button. Um, so by clicking start, uh, it, as it says, it starts the plan. Um, it changes to pause where you can pause the plan. Um, you can see on the left here what it's doing as the, as the plan's progressing. If I hit pause, uh, at the end of the current exposure it will pause the plan. So it will wait, um, or this pause it's got there, there you go, paused. Uh, the pause it had up there before was this one that's set in here. Um, of course resume is, resume the plan and away it goes. And of course then you've got stop which stops the plan. Um, where it is. It did, if you're in the middle of an image it will stop the plan in the middle of the image and that's the way it goes. Then you have several different options with your start as you notice it's got one of these little pluses on there so you hit hold down shift and click on it it brings up a couple of options you have for when you how you run the plan. Uh, you can loop it a specific number of times or if you leave it at zero it will keep looping until you stop the plan in another way. You can also schedule the plan to run and stop uh, by doing this. You can start it at a particular time. Um, you can start it and stop it at deep sky darkness which is the time when there's actually no moon in the sky and then it's at its darkest uh, or astro night or night. And you can combine these. So you can tell it to loop the plan, you can schedule a start, um, say you set up in the afternoon and you only want to record deep sky darkness time so by going that but you want it to continue looping during that whole time so you keep getting the images doing it this way it will wait until deep sky darkness is reached at that time it will start the plan it will loop and loop and loop and loop and at the end of deep sky darkness it will stop the plan um, this comes in handy if you've only got a little bit in the middle of the night or something you know a couple of hours of deep sky darkness um, so you can set it all up and be ready to go as soon as deep sky darkness is reached but that's just options for that um, as you noticed when I pressed start here, the pause has a plus on it too. So what happens when you press shift on that one? It asks you do you want to restart the current exposure. So that's something you can do. You can go yes and it will actually go back and restart that exposure. Um, of course you hit pause again. Resume's got a plus on it. Oh, what's that do? Nothing. <laughs> as you can see resume while it's got a plus on it, it actually does nothing. Uh, so resume plan and of course you've got your stop that immediately stops wherever the image is in the plan. And of course as I said you've got your list of plans here and they're specific to the type of camera connected. Uh, then you've got your plan editor where you can go in and edit different plans. Um, this is now available while a plan is running. It used to be you couldn't get into it once a plan started. And you can edit and create plans in here, but you cannot touch the currently running plan. So 
that's just to let you know and you can also get into that by double clicking on the box here it will bring it up as well and then of course there's the actual plan which is the different types of exposures you're taking exposure time the ISA for that exposure the pause is the pause in between images uh, how many images you're taking the quality AV and oh, sorry I've clicked this down before on the right here is a filter if you're using one and you want to change filters with it or anything else um, that's up to you but that's just details of your plan as the plan is running under each when it's on a particular one it will start a line across it it's just a visual reference to how far through that particular line on the plan it is and you can easily see where it's up to in the plan um, and we come down to the bottom like I said these uh, A and F down here that uh, turns on and off your AV and filter column if you don't want to know them um, I don't use a filter with my DSLR that needs changing so I turn the filter column off AV I leave on so I'm happy enough with that then there's ringy thingy which I've covered earlier videos in uh, your object name you can type it in here or you can select it use think keys thingy or you can go to the object browser and it will automatically be filled in so, uh, so auto to open the object browser uh, there you go the butterfly cluster and as you see it's filtered in down here as well uh, then you have your different exposure settings um, depending on what mode your camera is in as well but you can set it down to all the standard settings that your particular camera supports or you can just generally most people will probably be in bulb mode because they want to take longer than 30 seconds exposures and you set that time over here on the right um, of course your ISO whatever supported by your particular camera um, you can set it in there uh, the quality of your images generally I only do raw so I just leave it on raw by itself um, and then you got your AV settings which of course is relevant to whatever lens you've got of course if you haven't got a lens connected and you've got a telescope connected instead this will be irrelevant um, image preview this is to do with your preview screen in the middle here you have several options here you can turn it off if you don't want preview images um, you can have it like I have it generally set is to fit where the whole image is scaled down to fit on the screen uh, you can do one to one with just one to one you get the middle of the image and that's it and you can have scroll around with one and one I just leave it on fit because um, simply that if you want to go to one for one all you need to do is double click on the preview and you'll go in so that's you know there's a stuck pixel for you and double clicking again takes you back to the uh, fit view then you've got your image destination um, you can either save it just the camera just your PC or the PC and the uh, card on your camera um, I've got a 14 gigabyte card or well, 14.75 gigabytes of space left on mine but I always only save it to the PC I find this is much faster anyway and if I need a backup or anything else I'm using Datacraft to transfer to an external drive that I'm going to take to my processing PC anyway so I've got backup both on my uh, imaging system and an external drive so I just leave it on that now your anti vibration pause if your camera supports mirror lockup uh, through APT this is the pause you get before the image starts after a mirror, mirror lockup um, generally you probably won't be using this uh, if only use it if you're going to be doing images below about three or four seconds because once you start getting into longer exposures the um, amount of light collected during the long exposures will far outweigh any noise created by a vibration in the camera when the mirror locks up I've never actually used it so I just leave it at zero uh, next up we have the uh, your, ver your long exposure control and this depends on what camera you actually have connected um, since 2006 for Canons and 2012 for Nikons just use virtual uh, that works fine if you have the older cameras where you need to connect with a D sub cable or whatever then you'll need to ch choose the appropriate one but uh, virtual will work for most people nowadays but unless you've got a very very old camera uh, the other thing down here is your white balance um, if you're shooting in RAW this doesn't really matter uh, as you can change it in post I just leave it on daylight because I think that's what works for best for astro work um, 
and if I need to change it I'll do it in post and last of all just the camera details here on the bottom and that's it for the DSLR one um, a lot of this will be the same in your uh, CCD and CMOS one but uh, I'll cover the other different bits you get so I'm going to stop here right now um, and go get my other camera connected and I'll be right back bye okay so here we are in APT with my ZWASI 294mm Pro Mono as it says down the bottom connected um, for starters you're not going to see a real lot of difference uh, it's mainly the controls at the bottom again and what you see on the left hand side over here uh, where it's got your power percentage for your cooling and the current temperature um, I might actually start the cooling aid going uh, the current temperature outside is actually about 25 degrees I was playing with this a little earlier so it's a bit cooler and that'll just lower my temperature as it goes on over there so I'll just let that run while it's here uh, your disconnect start and stop buttons are all exactly the same all function the same whichever camera you have connected you know shift clicking on start will let you um, set different parameters for your plan uh, disconnecting and disconnecting of connecting and disconnecting I've covered in a previous video so I'm not going to go over it again here you start a plan uh, shift clicking on pause will ask you do you want to restart the current exposure and it'll go back and do that and of course uh, pause uh, resume and stop buttons all do the same thing uh, again you've got your plan list here just remember again that the plans in this setup will be different to plans in a DSLR setup they are not interchangeable then of course you've got your plan editor um, so you can edit your plans and everything else in here as I've said before I'll be going to into this more when I get to the actual section dealing with the plan editor and later on I'll be doing a deep dive video into this because there's so many things you can do with it um, so I'll leave that till then so I'm just going to cancel that one out again double clicking in the box here will open it as well um, then you've got your actual plan list what what is actually in the plan listed here um, exposure your binning the gain you're using if you set the gain the pause between images the number of images and the filter being used um, down on the bottom right here you have your little uh, two little buttons here uh, the zero the O turns off your offset column and the G turns off the gain column um, I like to leave my gain on so I'll leave that out there and then you have your object name now you have your various exposures um, like a DSLR it has a list of different exposures for how fast you want to be but most people will probably run it on bulb anyway and set their times in the uh, bulb seconds window over here uh, then you've got of course your binning uh, this will list the binning your camera supports uh, I generally use 2x2 two two with this camera and of course your gain setting um, for your gain now these settings down here for your camera here only affect when you hit a shoot button or if you're using plate solving and that it may use these ones if you haven't got um, anything else set to control it there by default in there so then we have region of interest um, you need images to be able to do this properly to show you but um, basically you have a set of four different region of interest you can set here currently there's talks about trying to get a user defined one but we'll see what happens with that and when you click your region of interest on um, you can click on center your region of interest which will center the region of interest on the image uh, with that deselected uh, when you're imaging you can actually get a new image up which will show the region of interest because you just click on where you want the region of interest and that's where it'll be then you'll take an image that will show that region of interest of course it's no good me doing it at the moment I'm not outside I haven't got a sky to look at so it's uh, nothing to see when I go into region of interest so I'll turn that back off for now um, the only or oh, before I go in the only thing is before you start a plan if you have a region of interest selected it will warn you you have it selected and do you want to continue so that's what you get there uh, turn that back off um, image preview same as with a DSLR that you've got your your fit where the whole image is on your preview you can turn the previews off uh, one to one where you'll only see the center of the image and on one to one scrolling as well 
which allows you to scroll with your image but I just use fit oh my temperatures down to zero there you go 49% power use okay so I can close that now I'll turn it off I've got to remember to turn it off and warm the camera and when the time comes but um yeah so your region of interest I leave it on on the fit because if I need to zoom in on anywhere on it and get one to one it's just simply a case of double clicking on the image to go in and out of zoom uh, one to one so I just leave it on that of course you have your cooler settings um, so you can turn your cooler on and off uh, of course if you try and turn it off while the while it's cooling is still on it will warn you uh, cooling aid you've just seen me running that um, I can go into more detail of that later on if you like uh, but basically ring thingy you set the temperature you want to get it down to uh, how many how much each step will be uh, so that's how lot how much it'll try and cool in one go the pause in between those steps and the time out for bit for each step um, so that's generally fine if you have a, th a uh, external sensor that gives you the ambient temperature it will list your ambient temperature in here the starting temperature um, what it's set for the current step so if I if the, mine it was 25 out here when I first started it the current step would have been to 18 and the cu actual current temperature and just the status of whether it's cooled or paused or in this case, in this case idle and now I'll start the warming aid so I've got warming aid if you have um, a sensor connected you can set this up so it'll automatically select the temperature to warm up to uh, I'm going to set this to 20 because it's actually 25 in here so as long as it's above dew point I'll put 15 will probably be enough it's far enough above dew point and the settings are the same the amount of steps and click start so the start temperature of the CD CCD sensor was minus 0.3 so the target at the moment is 7 degrees, what the current temperature is and what it's doing, it's warming. So now it'll try to warm to that temperature and I'll let, just let that go. Uh, your camera settings, um, if you click on that, it gives you various settings for depending on which camera you have connected. Uh, you can find out what your minimum and maximum gain is. You can set a default offset level. Uh, maybe I should do that a uh, USB speed percent if these aren't set it will just use what's in the driver anyway uh, if you have a dew heater connected to it you can run it through here and your white balance and uh, sorry your red balance and your blue balance set out uh, set of offsets uh, for how much you want when you're using a color camera so that's just something you can do there um, so I'll just leave that one as it is um, actually I might do my my black level and set that mine's normally I set it at 30 that's what I'm happy with I don't have a dew heater and I don't have a color camera so it doesn't really matter I do but this one isn't and just click OK and your camera name down the bottom here and that's really it for the camera tab um, as I said I'll later on be going more in depth into your plan editing um, I'll hit that anyway when I come to a the plan editor page in the user guide but it will be even more in depth one later on and so I'm just going to let this camera warm up but I'll end this video here and we'll see you in the next one when we're going to go through the gear tab so take care everyone and clear skies see us.